Hey cruisers, think back to your first cruise. Do you remember having any fears about your trip? Maybe you thought you could fall off the ship or that a cruise was too expensive. Today, we're breaking down new cruisers' worst fears and whether they're justified or myths. If you are new here, welcome. I'm Sherry with CruiseTipsTV.com and my family and I are here to inspire you to create the best cruise and travel experiences. We hope you'll stick around for more info and inspo and that by the end of this video, you'll want to hit that subscribe button. All right, let's talk about cruise fears. It seems that these days, a new cruiser's worst fear is that cruise ships are ugh, floating Petri dishes full of germs mega spreaders. You've probably heard this before and it's not a nice thing to think about, but let's dismiss this for what it truly is, an irresponsible attempt by lazy media to grab attention with provocative headlines. Sadly, it works more often than not, but let's look at the facts. Infectious disease professionals point out that cruise ships are at higher risk for certain types of outbreaks because passengers and crew converge on the ship from different locations and they share close spaces and facilities over time. You can't really argue with that fact. However, the vital fact to consider when dispelling the floating Petri dish myth is that the cruise industry is one of the most heavily regulated travel sectors on the globe. Ships are overseen by a comprehensive group of organizations, depending on where they travel. From the CDC, the US Coast Guard, the FBI, the EPA, and Customs and Border Protection to the International Maritime Organization and the laws associated with their country of registration, it's safe to say that cruise lines are heavily scrutinized and governed. And because of the CDC's Vessel Sanitation Program, the crew must follow strict industry guidelines to ensure that each ship is as clean and sanitary as possible. The disinfecting process is rigorous and thorough, which you will notice the moment you get on a ship. There's people cleaning up everywhere. Since the onset of the pandemic, cruise lines have instituted even more safety protocols to minimize the chance of onboard illness. So ask yourself, how do you think cruise industry safety protocols compare to other travel sectors? What other industry is going to these lengths for their guest safety? Time to move on to another big fear. Some people worry they will feel claustrophobic on a cruise ship and that there might be a lot of small spaces. This one is a little harder to dismiss because this is a real problem for some people. Claustrophobia is the fear of closed spaces and some spaces on cruise ships can feel small and confining. However, the great majority of today's cruise ships are large and full of open areas with lots of room to move around. These larger ships feel much less crowded and you can usually find some big open areas on the ship with very few to no people. To ease this, we recommend you book a room with a balcony and make a point of getting outside at regular intervals. Explore the open areas of the ship and breathe in the fresh open air as much as possible. All right, how about this one? I'll have to eat with strangers on my cruise. Aha! While this may have been a valid fear in the past, these days there are just far too many options available to mitigate this concern. Yes, on some cruise lines you have the option to be assigned a table for the duration of your cruise, and that table assignment may have you dining with strangers or just the people you're traveling with. But nowadays, it's your choice. It's pretty straightforward to adjust your seating arrangements on a cruise. Just head to the maitre d' on the first day of your cruise and let them know your preferences. Also, cruise ships are loaded with dining alternatives, from the buffet to specialty restaurants to poolside eateries and room service. There are plenty of ways to dine without worrying about making small talk between bites. The bottom line is, you don't have to eat with strangers if you don't want to. On the other hand, you can, if you wish. While we're on the topic of dining, here's another fear we hear a lot. I'll have to dress super formal for dinner. Most cruise lines do have some kind of a dress code. However, there are very few that strictly enforce them. 
formal night on cruise ships is something we look forward to. It's a cruise tradition that gives you a chance to put on your fancy duds, enjoy the fine dining experience, stroll the decks feeling elegant, and maybe have a photo or two taken. We love it. But hey, if that is not your jam, we get it. And guess what? The cruise lines get it too. That's why in addition to offering alternatives, most cruise lines don't enforce formal night garb. On the major lines, you'll find people pretty much wear what they want for formal night dinners. Of course, if you push the boundaries by wearing something like swimwear, cut off jeans, and flip flops on formal night, you might be turned away. Might. <laughs> there are exceptions though. Cunard still respects the tradition by maintaining a more formal dress code. In fact, Cunard's gala nights are black tie. But again, you choose the line you cruise with, so ultimately how you dress for formal night is up to you. If you want an ultra casual cruise experience, you can do that on the big three lines easily. Yep, you could indeed wear shorts and t-shirt all cruise long on Royal Caribbean, Carnival, and Norwegian. I actually think my dad does that. There, I said it. <laughs> You've probably heard this next one. I don't wanna be stuck in the middle of the ocean. Being stuck in the middle of the ocean on a luxurious cruise ship sounds pretty good to me, still. Unless you're doing a trans-Pacific or transatlantic cruise, you likely won't get the feeling of being stuck anywhere. Cruises are typically filled with exciting port stops and activities. So in terms of a cruise ship breaking down in the middle of the ocean, it's an improbable scenario. Yes. There have been some instances where cruise ships run into trouble, like an infamous and widely publicized incident when a carnival ship lost power in 2013. But these are extreme outliers and don't represent the safety or reliability of cruise ships. Surely this next fear is one you've seen headlines about. I've had countless people tell me they don't want to cruise because they fear they might fall off the ship or they're under the impression that it's easy to fall off a ship. But why would a cruise line, hotel, or anyone build something where you could easily tumble over the side? Just why? In our opinion, this fear is just silly and irrational, but we know where people get it. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Now the odds of falling overboard on a cruise ship are probably right up there with winning the lottery. Actually, they give a better shot at winning the lottery. There are high railings on all public decks and on your balcony. And cameras are just about everywhere monitoring activity. Do people go overboard? Yes, but it's usually the result of deliberate action by the person going overboard. But headlines will use the word fall overboard, which leads people who have never cruised to think it's easy to fall overboard. Foul play and suicide sadly contribute to a percentage of these incidents. Still, alcohol is most commonly associated with overboard incidents, so bartenders on cruise ships are actually trained to recognize when patrons have had too much to drink and stop serving them. Here's a challenge for you. Next time you see a news headline about one of these incidents, carefully note the words that they use to describe the incident. To close this point out, we'd like to share a quote from Sarah Kennedy, a spokesperson for CLIA, who states, there are no known cases of someone acting responsibly who has accidentally fallen over the railing of a cruise ship. That was a bit heavy, so let's dial it back a minute and talk about this next one. I'll be on a schedule and can't do my own thing on a cruise. If you watch 1970s and 80s shows and movies about cruises, you probably saw a lot of organized activity. But it's the 2020s, folks, and this just isn't the case anymore. We've often said cruises are what you make of them. They can be exciting and full of activity, or they can be relaxed and peaceful. It's up to you. The same is true for how structured you want your cruise to be. There doesn't have to be any schedule at all. Yes, some cruises have set dining times, but there are always, always ways around that. There's the buffet, room service, upcharge specialty dining, you name it. If you want structure, spend some time with the ship's newsletter, pick out all the activities you wanna do and create your own routine. Book some port excursions or just hang around by the pool. It's all up to you. 
the cruise line will certainly not hold you to any set schedule. Honestly, that freedom to do what you want, when you want, is one of the things we love about cruising. Now, I was surprised to hear that this next fear was a thing, but it is terrifying for some people. And that is the idea that you have to know how to swim to go on a cruise. While it's true that there are a lot of opportunities to swim on a cruise, it's certainly not a prerequisite for cruising. And other available activities far outweigh water sports. Modern cruise ships offer an unbelievable amount of shipboard activities. Everything from cocktail and photography classes to buzzing around a track in a go-kart. The same variety applies to excursions as well. There are just so many options. Some destinations lend themselves well to a dip in the pool, but on the flip side, locations like Alaska will rarely have people breaking out their Speedo or bikini. But again, cruises are what you make of them. So if you don't wanna swim or you don't know how to swim, don't worry. There are plenty of other things that you can do on a cruise. This next fear doesn't surprise me at all because the Titanic, that fear is the cruise ship will sink. This fear can be put to rest fairly easily. Modern cruise ships are designed to withstand rough seas, giant waves, and heavy winds. Yes, cruise ships can sink, but it's improbable, and there would have to be many contributing factors. Of course, many people remember and will point out the tragic Costa Concordia incident in 2013, but how many other cases of cruise ship sinking have you heard about since then? Do a quick search on the internet. Truth is, it is a rare occurrence. Ooh, how about this fear? I'll get sick on a cruise. Getting sick on a cruise is a real possibility, but the same could be said for any vacation or mode of travel. In fact, we always feel the most vulnerable in airports and on airplanes. Airlines aren't scrutinized like cruise lines, and I don't think we've ever seen airport staff disinfecting the public seating areas in the airport. And those things are like musical chairs, right? Next time your plane lands, watch how close people stand to each other while they're bustling to get off the plane. Definitely not six feet apart. You'll be lucky to get six inches apart. You get my point though. You can pick up germs and get sick just about anywhere, anytime. Do you wanna deny yourself the joy of cruising because you're worried about getting sick? It is a risk. Is it a risk worth taking? We'll leave that up to you, but for us, you gotta risk it for the biscuit. And we want that biscuit. All right, still with me? It's time for one of the most famous cruise myths out there. Everyone on the cruise ship will be old. The older you get, the wiser you are. And that's why you'll see so many older people cruising. But let's talk about this. First of all, why is this a bad thing? Older people aren't going to bother you. It's not like there's going to be a gang of rowdy older adults bullying you at the hot tub, maybe. Am I right? Kidding aside, some lines appeal to older cruisers and some lines draw a younger crowd. It's easy to figure out if you're genuinely concerned about, figure out which line is better for you. You can check out our cruise personality quiz on our website and down in the description of this video. The length of the cruise can also appeal to different demographics. Longer cruises tend to skew towards an older crowd, while the opposite is true for shorter cruises. Generally speaking, not everyone on every cruise will be older. According to gangways.com, here is how the average cruise passenger age group actually breaks down. Next up, cruise ships are crowded and feel like herding cattle. There may be some times on your cruise vacation when you could get the herded feeling. Embarkation and debarkation come to mind, but the cruise lines have come a long way in these areas. Before the pandemic, the cruise lines were hitting their stride by streamlining the embarkation and debarkation process. Now, because of the pandemic, it's remarkable how smooth the process continues to become. The cruise lines don't want you to feel crowded, and they're working so hard to avoid congestion points where they can. If you take embarkation and debarkation out of the equation, you can easily dismiss the fear of feeling like herded cattle. Think ocean breezes and sunset strolls around the promenade deck. I've never seen any cows on the promenade deck. Okay, my own brother dropped this cruise fear on me. 
I'll be bored stuck on the ship and there'll be nothing to do. Oh brother, I'm not sure I could be bored on a cruise if I tried. The days of laying around in a deck chair for seven days are long gone, my friends. Unless, of course, that floats your boat. Let's put all the crazy nightlife and entertainment aside because those are a given on most modern cruise ships anyway. What can you do during the day on a cruise? Let's see. How about water slides, go-kart racing, rope courses, surf simulators, zip lines, mini golf, basketball, tennis, observation rides like carnival sky ride, roller coasters, interactive floors and walls, levitating bars, Formula One race car simulators, rock climbing, skydiving. Would you be bored skydiving? I don't think so. So next time you think cruising is boring, think again. These aren't your grandpappy's cruises. Today, cruises are seriously legit in the activity department. Next up, one of my favorite fears to dispel. Cruises are too expensive. We often hear this one, and honestly, it's something we think about too. Now and then, we crunch the numbers to see if a land vacation might be a better option and a better value for us. Ultimately, cruises offer more bang for our buck. There are lots of unknowns with a land vacation, things like food, accommodations, and even gas add up quickly. The cost of food is wildly unpredictable, and let's not forget how frustrating it can be to find a restaurant that works for all of the members of your family or travel companions. These are non-factors on a cruise. Food is included in the price of your cruise, and there are so many dining options on board. We just talked about all the available activities on cruise ships these days. Can you imagine how quickly the cost of those same activities would add up on a land vacation? Is cruising expensive? It can be, but ultimately, holidays in general are expensive. The goal is to get the most for your hard-earned money. And for us, cruising is the answer. The food alone is enough for us on the budget. It's just so convenient. And that leads me to our final worst fear. I will gain weight on a cruise. Yeah, it's a possibility for sure, but that is in your hands. No one's gonna force you to eat on a cruise ship. However, food is plentiful on a cruise, and some of it is pretty irresistible. On the other hand, there's lots of opportunities to exercise on a ship. Many cruise ships have great gyms, spin classes, and other organized physical activities. There are ways to mitigate the effects of cruise ship delectables. Our family uses the stairs to burn off extra cruise calories. My husband and son have a rule never to use the elevator on a cruise ship. I cheat now and then when I'm wearing pumps and then take the elevator. But hey, I'm on vacation, so a little cheating here and there is okay. I truly understand the fear of gaining weight on a cruise. It's a respectable and valid concern, and it does happen for some. But should you avoid cruising because of it? No way! If you're worried about this, you'll have lots of opportunities for physical activities to counteract culinary indulgences. Okay, my friends, thanks for hanging out with me until the end. We hope that this has been helpful for you and that we've earned your subscription. So drop your cruise fears down in the comments below. Follow us over on Instagram. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye-bye. Hey, click me to subscribe. I do my own stunts. <laughs>